Now, there was a prophetic release this morning with understanding. Does everybody understand that when we're praying together in the spirit, I saw a flame of fire over each and every one, just like it happened in the upper room. And that flame began, the more we prayed in the spirit, that flame began to get, get bigger and bigger and bigger to where all of a sudden it met in the middle and it just kept going, 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 and going right up, right through the clouds, right through up to the throne room of God where he would just take it because in these flames were words. They were his words. There was mysteries. And he would just distribute it where he wanted to all over the earth, everywhere it was going, boom, boom. And it was infiltrating all areas of the globe. So know that because it's coming from him, amen, it's come, it, these are his mysteries, his words, his requests coming through us because they must come through the earth. They must come from the body to go back to him so they can be accomplished. Amen? Praise God. Would you turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10? How many of y'all know that the enemy's getting freaked out? They're doing everything they can. There's another th explosion in Ohio, now a steel company, besides the derailment. They're releasing these chemicals, they're contaminating the water, they're doing everything they can to destroy humanity everywhere. You know, there's a plastic company in Kissimmee that blew up too. They're blowing up and doing derailing, they're doing everything they can to kill as many people as possible. It's happening all over the world. Hallelujah. Because he's freaking out. They know they're coming down and they can't, they, there's nothing they can do about it. So they want to take out as many humans as they can. So this is where we need to be awake and be prepared for anything. Amen. Use discernment. Make sure you hear it through. But this is a time not to be wimpy, but to be bold. You just stand for truth. I don't care who you are. What's what? Care what position? How much money you got? It's got nothing to do with. We're to stand for truth and be bold. Stand for righteousness and justice. Amen. That's what we're to be standing for. Why? Because people are going to then think that you're like them. <laughs> we should have more boldness. And stand for more justice and righteousness than anybody else. Not be wince and cower. Not in fear. What if I offend someone who cares? Hello? This is a time where light has got to penetrate darkness. Not stand next to it or outside of it, but penetrate it. And it's not going to happen until people become bold and stop caring about what they might lose. Stop caring about the game. What are we taking territory? The Bible says take it by what? Force. We take it by force. Hallelujah. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10, let's speak it together. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. The word Lord means what? Spirit. So you mean strong in the spirit. And the power of his might, which is his anointing. So be strong in his spirit and the power of his anointing to what? To reject, to resist, and to respond against all evil, ungodly influence, seen and unseen. See, we're now at a cutting edge. Many people are going to get pushed out of the way. People are standing for things that are carnal instead of spiritual. We've got to stand up and fight now. It is that time. He says something very important in verse 11. He says what? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the, wild, the wiles or trickery of the devil. And for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand, resist, reject, Attack in the evil day, no, having done all to stand. 
too many people are getting pushed out of the way. You know, sometimes, look, we're not to be given up an inch. We're to be taking it. Every time the enemy should come at you, you should be taking what he has. Hallelujah. It's time to be bold, not a wimp. Ephesians 4, 17. This I say, therefore, in testifying the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk <laughs> in the fruitlessness <laughs> of their mind or their thoughts, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them and because of the blindness of their heart. Now, what's their heart? That, in other words, it's the core of all desire. So they're, they're, not, they're not even examining their desires. They're just going after them, wanting to fulfill all desires. This is according to the world. So their unfruitfulness of their thoughts of the soul and blindness of their ungodly desires, not willing to learn the ways of truth from the true reality in Christ. They are, here's the reason why. They are unable to separate their spirit, their soul, and their body. We've got to learn how to separate our spirit, our soul, and body. And their influences. He said that having their understanding dark and being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, or they don't even see their own desires. Who be in verse 19, being past feeling, having given themselves over to lewdness to work all uncleanliness with greediness. He says, but you have not learned Christ. You've not learned the life of Christ. Did Christ know how to separate spirit, soul, and body? You betcha. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your what? Your formal conduct in all areas. The old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Those are desires. And be renewed in the spirit or the spirit of your mind or the spirit of your thoughts. And that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Again, why are these individuals unfruitful in their thoughts of the soul in blindness in their own ungodly desires? Because they're not, they do not know how to separate their spirit, soul, and body. You know, in the world, we just thought we were who we were. We never realized that we're a triune being. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body. In fact, it's associated with the tabernacle of God. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way is the body. The truth is the soul, which means be converted. And the life is the spirit. So Jesus was saying, here I am. I am the tabernacle. Amen? And so now we are the temple and tabernacle of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, and we have a body. In fact, your mouth is the altar of sacrifice. Because it gives the praises of sacrifice. So you're either offering up good things or bad things. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. Spirit, soul, and body. Triune beings. That's who we are. We're a spirit and a flesh suit. Just like the, when they went to the moon, they had a moon suit, but they couldn't survive. When you go scuba diving, you need some air and oxygen and, you know, need a suit down there, man. Hallelujah. And, and in this, one of the things that God is trying to do is a light. When, in the spirit realm... The enemy knows whether you know this or not. He knows whether you can discern your spirit, soul, or body. Because he'll attack you through every area. Amen? Does everybody get it? So the Bible says, be strong in the Lord. Now, the, uh, in the Lord, being, being strong in the spirit. So your spirit, man, needs to be strengthened. It needs to be fed with the things of God, with the word of God, which is food. 
the soul must be converted so it can interpret what God is saying. So all of these things, and then the flesh must be crucified because it submits. Listen, the Father thinks, Jesus speaks, the Spirit moves. Triune. The Father thinks, Jesus speaks, the Spirit moves. They're all one. And one of the things God is trying to get us to, to where your spirit, soul, and body are unified. 2 Timothy chapter 3 is everybody there. Verse 1, let's speak it. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. We already know it's the last days, and perilous times are already here. For men will be lovers of what? Why? Because they can't separate their spirit, soul, and body. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders without self-control, brutal despisers of good, Traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. They have a form of goodness or godliness, but denying the power of Christ. And from such people turn away. Why? Because bad habits, bad company corrupts what? Good habits. Amen. For these are the sort who creep into households, ministries, businesses, and take captives of gullible men and women, load them down with sins, and are led away with various lusts or desires. They're always learning. Oh, they learn, 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 and learn. But they never get it. Because they never put it to practice. So they're, they're always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Well, it says truth sets you free. Not if you know it, but if you practice it and put it into play. Amen? It says, now Janus and Jabiris resisted Moses, so did these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith, but they will progress no further, for their folly will be made manifest to all as theirs also was. In other words, they are unable to separate spirit, soul, and body. They're not able to, they're always learning, but they're never able to get free. Never able to get free. Why? Because they can't discern. The discernment has been nullified. 1 John chapter 5, verse 6. This is he, representation of Jesus, amen, who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not only by water, but, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit who bears witness because the Spirit is truth. Now look at this. For there are three that bear witness in heaven. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these are what? One. In other words, it's the Spirit, soul, and body of God Almighty, even though that they're all one. And there are three that bear witness on earth. And that is the spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree as one. So they agree. One is one. One agrees as one. And that's what God's trying to do with me and you here on the earth. He's trying to get our spirit, soul, and body to agree. So that we are one in the spirit. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Three in heaven, three on earth. The ones on earth agree. We'll only become truly one is when we depart from here and get re our redemptive body. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 4, in verse 11. Let us therefore be what? Diligent to enter that rest. Lest anyone fall according to the same example of disobedience. Let me tell you, when your spirit, soul, and body agree, they're, in other words, they're submissive to one another. And it takes a, a place and a, and a practice where you have dominion over it. Because sometimes there's no, <laughs> there's no unity till there's dominion. There's a place of rest. 
You walk in God's rest all the time. You're at rest. You're at peace. You know that you know that you know. Amen? In verse 12. For the word of God is what? Living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. Now look it. It says what? It's piercing even the division of the what? Soul. Well, what's your soul made of? Your mind, your will, your emotions, your imagination. Amen? Piercing even the division of soul and spirit. And of the joints and marrow. Well, what's the joints and marrow part of? Your body. Amen? And is, a dis and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart or the desires. So the word of God affects every area. To do what? Bring agreement. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him whom to whom we must give account. See, some people are still living more out of their soul than they are out of the spirit. Now, again, and that's living out of the mind and the thought. They walk in fear. They walk in doubt. They're led by how they feel all the time. If it doesn't feel right, it ain't right. That's not true. Hello? And this is where, instead of being led by the Spirit, and being led by the Spirit is not always an area where you're hearing the voice of God all the time. It's a knowing within. Somebody comes to me and tells me, God said this all the time, all the time, all the time. They're granola, nutty and fruity. Hello? Why? Because God doesn't speak to you like that all the time. He speaks to us every day. Amen? And all the time. But he speaks to us in, it says, in various ways. But there's a knowing within you that you will know. And as your soul is converted, it's being converted to interpret what God is saying to your spirit. Because he's speaking to your spirit. It's spirit to spirit. God is spirit. Amen? So he speaks to our spirit. Our soul interprets what our spirit is being said. And then, it go, then your body does the work. Amen? Then your body submits. Why? Because it's submitting to authority. Is everybody okay? That's why there's life and death in the power of the tongue. Because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. What you sow is what you reap. Amen? Now again, yes, God speaks to us all the time. I mean, he speaks to us through signs around us. When you go to a red light, he just said, stop. <laughs> Yellow meant slow down. <laughs> you know, he speaks to us through colors. He can speak to us through any way he wants. But majority of the time, it's through impression. And sometimes through circumstance, especially afflictions. Especially when you did something, you go, man, I miss God on that one. <laughs> Whoops, wrong choice. <laughs> you know, I knew I should have done that. You know, when you, I mean, you just knew something that you knew that you knew, but you didn't do it. I knew I shouldn't have married that person. I knew I shouldn't have bought that vehicle. Hello? I just knew it, but I did it anyway. What? To please man. Or, or to please an emotional time. That one night affair, I knew I should have done that. Now I'm paying child support. Hello. <laughs> Nobody gets away. <laughs> I knew I should. I mean, I should have listened to my friends before I got in the car leaving that bar. Now I got four DUIs or whatever. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, I'm just saying that we there are things that we knew that even when we were stupid. Drugged up. We just knew that we knew that we knew, and we shouldn't have done the doo doo. And it became doo doo. Hello. And we got ourselves in trouble. 
But God will speak to us in multiple ways. Never limit how God has to speak to you. Well, I didn't hear that today. <laughs> he wasn't speaking to you that way that day. Amen? Quit tell, telling God how he needs to speak to you. <laughs> oh, glory. 1 Corinthians 6, 12. All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Foods for the stomach and stomach for the foods, but God will destroy both it and them. Now, the body is not for sexual immorality, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. Hello. And God both raised up the Lord and will also raise us up by his power. Do you not know that you are the bodies of the members, that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take a member, the members of Christ, and make them members of a harlot? Certainly not. Or do you not know that he who is joined to a harlot is one body with her? For the two, he says, shall become one flesh. But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Why? Because the Lord is the spirit. So your spirit is to be joined with the spirit of the Lord. That's why he says, flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body, but he who commits sexual immorality sins against his own body. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit which are God's. We're to be joined to the Lord and become one spirit. Amen? So God is trying to convert everything over so that we're all in agreement. Your spirit, your soul, and your body. That's why worship is so essential for your spirit. That's why the Bible says, you shall worship God in truth and in what? Spirit. So your spirit man gets strong by your worship. Your soul becomes converted by the words of God. And your body becomes submissive because it gets crucified. Those who are led by the spirit of God, their bodies are what? Crucified. Now they're in submission. So what happens is, that's why Jesus said, you know, you must drink of my blood and eat of my flesh. So that is the nourishment uh, of your soul and your spirit. That's what's called the tree of life. Amen? When he told Adam and Eve, man, you, can, you, can, you can all eat here. This is essential. That's what's going to sustain you. People have been taken to heaven. Man, there's some powerful testimonies where people have been taken to heaven. And when they got there, they would be there for a little bit and they begin to get drained. Because they don't have a glorified body. And the angel would bring them over to the tree and pull off a fruit of the tree and say, here, eat this. And it would begin to refresh them, restrain them so they can stay there a little bit longer. Because they're not set to, to live there yet. And then the Lord sends them back. There's a wonderful little book uh, that was left for me by the Lord one day. It's called Beyond the Veil. I read it years ago. I was, we were doing a, a, a prayer. We, we, were on the, we were the prayer team from midnight to 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning. And my wife and I used to go there. And we'd be in this room. We'd be answering the phones and praying with people and so forth and whatever. And there was a book that was left for me brand new. And I knew it was the Lord. I knew somehow. I asked everybody in these places. Were, did anybody, did somebody leave this book? Did they lose it? You know, and I read, and man, we would, be, we would read this in between. Powerful. It was about uh, students, I think it was in China or somewhere. And, and, and the glory of God hit this place, and the kids were taken in the spirit, and the teachers weren't. And they were watching the children 
talking to the angels. And the children that were, they were like, they were being taken. And the angels were feeding them fruit from the trees so that it could sustain and stay there longer. This went on for days. This just didn't happen a minute. This went on for days. And then they began to show them hell. And the kid, and the, like they, all of a sudden, they all, all the kids gathered around and they all got on their knees and were looking down. And they all began to scream and, and cry because they began to see hell and so forth. Powerful flick. And one of the kids just refused all the time. And they kept saying, call on Jesus, he got sick. They said, call on Jesus. He didn't call on Jesus, and a demon showed up, shackled him, and brought him to hell. Because, see, the demons will come and get you, or the angels do. Amen? Anyway, it's very, quite interesting. Ezekiel 36. I started at 22. Therefore, say to the house of total freedom, true ministries, thus says the Lord, I do not do this for your sake, O house of true ministries, but for my name's sake, which you have profaned among the nations wherever you went. And I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned in their midst. Now, we know he's talking to Israel because they were disobedient. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord God, says the Lord God, when I am hallowed, reverenced, and honored, respected in you before their eyes. Ooh. That means that you are bold for him. You are strong in the spirit and the power of his anointing. Verse 24, for I'll take you from among the nations. Every one of us has come from somewhere. Nationality, whatever. Amen. But we all carry one blood. Doesn't matter what your outward looks like. Doesn't matter what your spirit is. Amen. For I will take you from among the nations, gather you out of all the countries, and bring you into your own land. Then I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you shall be clean. I will cleanse you from all your filthiness and from all of your idols. And I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you when you are born again. And I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. In other words, new desires. And I will put my spirit within you. And cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. In other words, I'm going to I'm going to unite your spirit with my spirit, so you can have dominion. Does everybody get this? Romans eight twenty eight. See, this is where individuals again they. They lack to be strong in the spirit. Why? Worship. Lack of worship. Remember, the, your spirit is strengthened by worship. Spirit to spirit. Amen? So when individuals are lacking that worship, you know, it's, I mean, it's good to worship by yourself, and yeah, but man, there ain't nothing better than corporate worship. Because you just unite together. You get in quicker, you get refreshed quicker, things. You got to fight sometimes. We know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. For whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be what? Conformed into the image of his son, hmm? that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. Moreover, whom he predestined, these he also what? Called. Whom he called, these he also justified. And whom he justified, these he also glorified. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, then what? Who can be against us, man? Hallelujah. Conform into his image. That's what the process is. We are in regeneration of everything into his image. Third John, verse 2. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things. Anybody here not want to prosper? <laughs> I'm glad nobody rolls their hand. <laughs> we all want to prosper. Amen. We all want to grow. We all want to get better. We want to get stronger. No more. You know, we all. 
If you don't, there's something wrong. But he says, look at this, how it's going to have to be done. Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in what? Health. Wow. Just as your what? Soul prosper. In other, just as your soul is converted, your mind, your will, your emotions, your imaginations, what are they doing? They're lining up with the truth of God. So, the, see, deliverance is not only just removing spirits, but all corruptible seeds, corruptible habits, corruptible desires that are harmful to you. Your spirit man will become stronger now so that it doesn't do the things it desired to do because it's harmful to you. Certain movies and certain books and certain associations, certain people, places and things, certain foods, these things here, you're going to, your spirit man is going to begin to say, no, and your soul is going to agree. And your flesh is going to agree. No. Harmful. 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 You'll have a warning. Harmful. Don't touch this. Harmful. Amen? And I'll never forget I went into a bookstore. And there was this wild looking picture on this book. And I wanted to look at it more. And as soon as I put it up, the Holy Spirit said, drop it. And I dropped it. He said, now go out and cleanse yourself. I was a baby. I went out, and, and I raised my hand, and I said, Lord, cleanse me with the blood of Jesus. He said, that was an accursed item book, and I don't want nothing touching you. I was only a few days old in the spirit, but very sensitive to everything. Get cleansed. And when he said, I want to go out and cleanse yourself, I knew what he meant. Go out and wash myself with the blood. Amen? So we need to do that also. Wash yourself with the blood. Especially if you're at somebody's house that's sick. You got a decree, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And I cleanse me with the blood. Amen? Don't go around touching everything in there either. Hallelujah. <laughs> Beloved, I pray that you may prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. For I rejoice greatly when brethren came and testified of the truth that is in you just as you walk in the truth. I have no greater joy than to hear that my children live in the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Your soul is converting. Your flesh is being crucified. Not only that, is your, your body will become healthy. It becomes what? Healthy. The word says a joyful heart is good medicine. So the enemy likes to bring oppression. So you got to stay joyful. No matter, that's why it says count it all joy no matter what's going on. Why? Because you're a child of God. You're a joint heir of Christ. What can we do that he can't? We know it's going to work to the good, even when we've done something stupid. We repent, we put it under the blood, it's going to work to the good. No matter what. 1 Corinthians 2, 9, please. You know, we all have a tendency to worst think first, right? Uh, that's where you got to grab hold of react, choke it until respond comes. <laughs> Don't let react come into play. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Let's speak it together. Hallelujah. But as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his what? All right, now grab hold of this. Through his what? His spirit that's communicating with your spirit that your soul must interpret. Amen? For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. 
For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. See, he's talking about the spirit of man, your new spirit, and the spirit of God. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. How's it going to begin? Spirit to spirit. These things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. That's why the anointing teaches us. Be strong in the Spirit, amen, and the power of the anointing. Verse 14. But the natural man don't know stinking nothing. Hello. Oh. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually what? Discerned. For who has, uh, but he who is spiritual judges all things, that he himself is rightly judged by no one, because that relationship and closeness with the Lord, you know, you're, you're all, always judged, self-judging yourself. You know, you're always self-judging yourself. You don't need no one else to judge you. You know. And the Holy Spirit is always there to give you quick conviction. In fact, we should look for conviction, right? Verse 16, for who has known the mind or the thoughts of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the thoughts of Christ. How? Through the Spirit of God, who's united with our spirit. So we have no excuse. Amen. We don't have any excuse. We know all things. It's all there. It's just a matter of ears to hear. Amen. Heart to receive. Don't harden the heart. Titus 3, verse 4. When the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing of regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace or his plan, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying. And these things I want you to affirm constantly. That those who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. But do something. Avoid foolish disputes. Genealogies, contentions, and strivings about the law, for they are unprofitable and useless. Reject the device of man after first and second admonition knowing that such a person is warped as a granola and sinning, being self-condemned. Hallelujah. Again, we are in the process of regeneration. It doesn't stop. You know, we just didn't get poof and it was over with. It's constant. We are regenerating. You will go through all kinds of stuff, trials, tribulations, events, discouragements, rejections, offenses. You're going to go through all these things. It's all a process of regeneration so that we're in the crushing for new wine, for new power, ah, so the kingdom can be manifested in us and through us. And I'm going to close it Second Peter chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as his divine power is given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness, to the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may what? Be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world of, through lust. Again, that divine nature is established by the agreement and unity of your spirit, your soul, and your body. 
but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be what? Barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old ways. Therefore, brother, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall what? You will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Spirit, soul, and body. We are a triune being. Amen? Remember the Holy Spirit? It's unified with your spirit. So we don't want to grieve the Holy Spirit, do we? Amen. Our soul is in constant conversion. And your body will be crucified because we're being led by the Spirit and submissive. But we should be able to discern these things. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you seal, seal your word of truth in us so that it may grow and bear fruit for your glory in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.